Welcome everyone to Read the Right Thing. I'm your host, Eric. Hope you're doing well. So excited to talk about books today. Today I'm talking about one of my favorite books. It's not a work of fiction. It's an autobiography. I grew up loving biographies and autobiographies. That's really what started my love of reading. Recently, Boston College assigned the book Born to Run by Bruce Springsteen as a reading assignment for all incoming freshmen of the class of 2024. Springsteen also gave the convocation for the opening of the school year for Boston College, something Barack Obama has also done. What does Bruce Springsteen have to do with college? On the surface, maybe not much, but dig a little deeper, and his story is one everyone can learn from. Born to Run, this autobiography is honestly one of my favorite books that I've read. Whether you're a fan of Springsteen or not, I think everyone should read this. For Bruce Springsteen, it honestly could have gone either way. He was either going to make it by becoming a mega rock and roll star, or he was going to end up some small town guy strumming his guitar in a bar on Asbury Park. Richard Ford, in his review of this book, said, how the hell do you get from Freehold, New Jersey to this, this being Bruce Springsteen, mega rock and roll star, in only 50 short years? You know, and the, the answer to that is you don't. That's what makes his story so remarkable. Springsteen writes about his life, demystifying his career, his musical canon, and his success. In the convocation to Boston College, which just happened recently, Springsteen talks about how either way, he was going to be strumming that guitar, either on the stage in Madison Square Garden or in some bar somewhere. Boston College calls it an intimate portrait of the inner struggles and triumphs of one of America's most beloved musical icons. Published in 2016, I was still a college student when I read this book. I was slowly becoming a Springsteen fan, and this book really pushed me over the edge to becoming a full-fledged maniac. Sometimes autobiographies, especially sports autobiographies, come across as holier-than-thou. Holier-than-thou advertisements for how good and hard-working the subjects are. Springsteen, known for doing things his way, writes a completely different type of autobiography. It's a lot more honest. He even calls himself a sissy. He explores family, faith, and his personal battles with depression, as well as how he made it in the music industry. One of the great American songwriters, it should come as no surprise that Springsteen can write prose too. His writing is clear, direct, and at times more articulate and eloquent. The cover of this book is really cool. It's an old picture of Springsteen standing next to his old car. I come from a boardwalk town where almost everything is tinged with a bit of fraud. So am I. By 20, no race car driving rebel, I was a guitar player on the streets of Asbury Park and already a member in good standing amongst those who lie in service of the truth. Artists with a small a. But I held four clean aces. I had youth, almost a decade of hardcore bar band experience, a good group of homegrown musicians who were attuned to my performance style and a story to tell. This book is both a continuation of that story and a search into its origins. I've taken as my parameters the events in my life I believed shaped that story and my performance work. One of the questions I'm asked over and over again by fans on the street is, how do you do it? In the following pages, I will try to shed a little light on how, and more important, why. DNA, natural ability, study of craft, development of and devotion to an aesthetic philosophy, naked desire for fame, love, admiration, attention, women, sex, and oh yeah, a buck. Then, if you want to take it all the way out to the end of the night, a furious fire in the hole that just don't quit burning. These are some of the elements that will come in handy should you come face to face with 80,000 or 80 screaming rock and roll fans who are waiting for you to do your magic trick. Waiting for you to pull something out of your hat, out of thin air, out of this world, something that before the faithful were gathered here today was just a song-fueled rumor. I'm here to provide proof of life to that ever-elusive, 
Never completely believable us. That is my magic trick. And like all good magic tricks, it begins with a setup. So, so that com comes from the forward. So as you can see, Spring seems very honest in his, in his memories about himself. He even calls himself a fraud. That forward, I don't know if I'm just a fan, but honestly, it gives me chills. You know, he sets up the whole stage. One thing that I really love about Springsteen is his ability to tell stories. His ability to use words and also pauses and silence to, to drive home emotions. You know, that, that forward, it really gets me excited to read the book. It gets me excited about what's coming. Honestly, it gives me chills reading that. Also, what's cool about this book is that right after this book, Springsteen did a one-man show on Broadway called Springsteen on Broadway. And I actually have the show bill framed on my desk right here. And as you read this book, either before, during, or after, it'd be very interesting to also watch that show. He takes a lot of excerpts from this book, intermingled with songs and other stories, and puts on a hell of a show. It's interesting he talks about being a fraud because no book has come across as so transparent and authentic than this book. Even if you are not a fan of the man or his music, he is relatable. He is an American. He has a relatability to everyone, middle class, poor, upper class. His upbringing, just a poor kid from New Jersey, to his relationship with his parents, school, community, church. Anyone who has felt like an outsider will surely relate. After reading this book, I just honestly felt I wanted to shout, somebody understands me, somebody gets it, this guy gets it. Funny that it took a man in his late 60s to relate to me. In high school, I tried getting into Springsteen's music, but it didn't really stick. I wasn't ready. I wasn't in the mindset to have the music really hit my soul. In college, at my religious private school where I felt like an outcast, I felt the constant urge to get the hell out of there. I didn't try to get into Springsteen this time. It just sort of happened. The music, the lyrics, the overarching themes ignited my mind and fed my soul. I was slowly becoming a fan. I would watch YouTube videos. I would listen to the music. And then I read this book and I was all in. Born to Run is a glimpse into one man's dreams, triumphs, downfalls, and hard times. Like Springsteen's music, he holds nothing back. The intended audience is clearly his adoring, loyal, crazy legion of fans. Springsteen writes of his upbringing, his family, half Italian, half Irish, his small town, his church. But what really hits you in this book is when he writes about his father and the relationship that he had with his dad. I was not my father's favorite citizen. As a boy, I figured it was just the way men were, distant, uncommunicative, busy within the currents of the grown-up world. As a child, you don't question your parents' choices. You accept them. They are justified by the godlike status of parenthood. If you aren't spoken to, you're not worth the time. If you're not greeted with love and affection, you haven't earned it. If you're ignored, you don't exist. Control over your own behavior is the only card you have to play in the hope of modifying theirs. Maybe you have to be tougher, stronger, more athletic, smarter, in some way better. Who knows? One evening, my father was giving me a few boxing lessons in the living room. I was flattered, excited by his attention and eager to learn. Things were going well, and then he threw a few open palm punches to my face that landed just a little too hard. It stung. I wasn't hurt, but a line had been crossed. I knew something was being communicated. We had slipped into the dark netherland beyond father and son. I sensed what was being said. I was an intruder, a stranger, a competitor in our home, and a fearful disappointment. My heart broke and I crumpled. He walked away in disgust. When my dad looked at me, he didn't see what he needed to see. This was my crime. His relationship with his dad is very sad, but it's relatable and it also evolves over time to become happier in the end. Springsteen recounts how he felt as a child in that boxing lesson from his dad, but he also recounts a story later on that adds a glimpse into why his father was the way he was. One evening at the kitchen table, late in life, when he was not well, he told me a story of being pulled out of a fight he was having in the schoolyard. 
my grandmother had walked over from our house and dragged him home. He recounted his humiliation and said, eyes welling, I was winning, I was winning. He still didn't understand he could not be risked. He was the one remaining living child. My grandmother, confused, could not realize her untempered love was destroying the men she was raising. I told him I understood that we had been raised by the same woman in some of the most formative years of our lives and suffered many of the same humiliations. However, back in the days when our relationship was at its most tempestuous, those things remain mysteries and create a legacy of pain and misunderstanding. So Springsteen writes about the misunderstanding and pain that the relationship with his father had caused him and how he didn't always get a chance to talk these things out. It's really a, a sad relationship. He was always trying to prove his worth to his father, but didn't feel like he received worth or love. So that's my thoughts on this book, Born to Run by Bruce Springsteen. I love this book. I read this book when it first came out. I listened to the audio book that is recorded by Bruce Springsteen himself. I had the great opportunity to go see Springsteen on Broadway live. I was teaching high school English out in New Jersey and I somehow fell into a ticket and got to see Bruce Springsteen on Broadway live, which was great. And I'm really just a fan of his work, his writing, his music, and his storytelling in general. I think everyone should read this book. It's great American literature. It's a great American story. So that's my review. What did you think of Bruce Springsteen's Born to Run? If you like this video, hit the like button. If you want to see more videos of uh, book reviews that I will be doing, hit the subscribe button. As always, thanks for tuning in. I hope you pick up this book. Let me know what you think.